Let's bring on board then Paul Shruti, founder and editor at Shruti Research. He joins us uh, from Hong Kong this morning. And Paul, yet again, it's crude prices dictating the market mood, a nice strong bounce for equities. Uh, do you think it will sustain beyond a day? Uh, the, the short answer is I doubt it. Uh, you know, the last few times I've been on your show, I've been very skeptical and a bit and, and concerned and afraid. Uh, the, the epicenter of a lot of the problem in the world is the European banks. So a lot of these European banks are trading at 0 0.3, 0 0.4 times book. And so what's happening is these negative rates, as your previous commentator, you know, noted, uh, are, are wrecking what is already a very weak financial system in the heart of Europe. And, and, and so this negative rate structure is 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 making a, a, a bad situation even worse. Uh, and the same is true in Japan. And so uh, what we need from the uh, emerging markets as we go into the G20 uh, on the 27th and 28th is a, a lot of stimulus or we're in trouble. <laughs> uh, Paul, do you think somewhere markets have lost confidence in what central bankers can do you know frankly central bankers have communicated that look you know we are together we are united we will print money but that is not restoring a calm well well that, that's right so a couple of things is yeah i just got back from a global tour with seeing all my clients in america and 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 europe and you know i think one of the reasons why gold has had such a huge move in the last uh three to four weeks is, is, is a reflection of a, a lack of confidence in central banks. And so I think the gold price is telling us the answer to your question. The second part of this is that, you know, the, the Bank of Japan said they were never going to have negative rates, and that now they have right, negative rates. Uh, John Cryan, you know, a head of Deutsche Bank, had an hour and a half call with, with clients yesterday, and, and he was saying to clients that the negative rates in, in Germany are killing Deutsche Bank, right? So... So, so all in, you know, Deutsche Bank is dealing with, you know, negative 30 basis points plus 25 basis points in costs. You know, so, so, so Deutsche Bank, which is the, the most troubled bank in the world, trading at the lowest price to book, it, it, at its starting point is minus, is minus 60 basis points, right? So, so how do you make up for that with, with, with a gigantic balance sheet? It's like you want to even get out of the banking business, right, as Deutsche Bank, but they can't. Paul, uh, what is that biggest monetary bill over the course of the next uh, one or two months? Uh, the Chinese markets after that holiday have resumed trading and they haven't really set the stage on fire the last couple of weeks. Oil has largely been in a trading range, so to say, up uh, a day or two, then again correcting. So what is that big monetary bill for global markets? Because it's certainly not the Fed action. And all probability there'll be a pause there. Okay, so yeah, so I can tell you right now, I've just been talking to people in the last few days and a lot of my clients. March 10th is the ECB meeting, and everyone is pointing to March 10th as a, a very important date for us to pay attention to uh, uh, because that's when the ECB is going to hopefully, hopefully, come up with some sort of plan to purchase uh, assets directly off the banks, uh, which has never happened before. And, and they're going to do it in a way that's legal and, and authorized by the mandates and the treaties that, that everybody is, uh, you know, agreed to. Uh, and, and so if we don't see, like, a, a dramatic action on March 10th, I think we could really have a problem in the world. So, so we're looking at that. And, and we're also looking at India and China to see how much, what, what, what the potential is for stimulus through um, through uh, fiscal uh, stimulus and uh, tax cuts um, and, and you know uh, having uh, big economies like India and China uh, running fairly large fiscal deficits for a while uh, at the expense of their currencies uh, in order to stimulate growth but we'll have to see but the G20 is giving India full you know uh, permission to you know be anything short of reckless in terms of fiscal deficit spending. Paul, for an investor, is this a good time to buy the fear or this is just the beginning of what could be called as a prolonged winter for, uh, uh, for global markets? If we don't have a, a dramatic action <clears throat> at, uh, by the largest banks in the world, the largest banks in the world are straight in London, 
Paris and Frankfurt. Uh, and these banks are in trouble, and we need a way to for the ECB to help help out these banks: BNP, Sockgen, Credit Agricole, Deutsche Bank. Those four banks are among the top twelve largest banks in the world, and they're all trading at 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 times book. We need to get Europe out of the mess, and and the ECB needs to do the kind of aggressive action that the Fed did in 2008, or, or we're in big trouble. Uh, and then in terms of the the, the fiscal stimulus. It'll help, but, but it's not going to get us out of it. Bottom line, I agree with your, your man before who was speaking before I got on. There are a lot of people who are trapped in positions and want to get out, and I think there are more people trapped than there are people who want to get in. And so I think if we're going to get uh, people coming in to buy, I think the buyers are going to get met by a lot of people who want to exit uh, a lot of these positions who are stuck in things that went down 20, 30, 40 percent you know, in a very quick hurry be across asset classes. Paul, good chatting with you. Thanks much for taking the time out and speaking with us today. Thank you. That's the view then from Shruti Risa.